BMW i3 models with a range extender have a small gas engine and a small fuel tank to increase vehicle travel distance from 150 miles to 200 miles per charge. Inside the range extender fuel tank is a fuel tank pressure sensor. BMW states the sensor is a combination pressure and temperature sensor. However, I've only seen pressure sensors installed on these models. Always confirm with the latest parts information. The internal seals inside the sensor fail over time and will set related fault codes. Today we are working on a 2017 i3 with range extender and it has the following stored fault codes. I've already tested the sensor and it is faulty so let's see how to replace it. Before beginning, familiarize yourself with BMW's safety instructions for working with electric vehicles, available in BMW's up-to-date repair information. All work on electric vehicles is to be performed by specially trained personnel. Begin by relieving the fuel system pressure and draining the fuel tank using a fuel recovery system. We'll start by removing this lower shield, which consists of 16 E12 bolts and four 8 millimeter head screws. Once the shield is removed, be advised do not drive the vehicle, this is part of the structure. When removing this lower shield, there are coolant hoses attached to either edge of this. Here's an example of how they attach. There's a clip here and a clip here that attaches to this raised edge of this lower shield. Make sure you detach that when removing the shield. Once we remove all the fasteners for the wheel well liner, we'll remove the wheel well liner to gain access to our fuel filler neck. Once we have the wheel well liner off, we'll need to remove the fastener for the fuel filler tube. BMW mentions there's a fastener here. In our case, we just have a rubber bumper but we do have a fastener at the top, which we will remove to facilitate removal of the fuel filler neck from the fuel tank. There are two trim covers that need to be removed on either side, passenger and driver. They're held in by scotch lock, and they simply pop right off. To remove the luggage bin, there are six T25 screws holding it in, two at the bumper, two at the base, and two at the wiper cowl. Once the fasteners are removed, you can remove the luggage bin. Before we pull our fuel tank out, we'll need to disconnect the fuel filler and vent line and an electrical connector just behind this AC line out of view. The fuel filler has a single clip that needs to be pushed towards the center of the filler, releasing the arms on the opposite side to release that fitting. The vent line has a two-tab squeeze connector. You'll squeeze from both sides to pull that one off. And our electrical connector is a simple single-tab connector. Push on the tab, pull on the connector, and it will come right off. Okay, so let's support the fuel tank with the jack and we'll remove the four bolts securing it to the vehicle. Now we'll lower the fuel tank 10 centimeters while disconnecting the fuel filler neck at the same time. So we'll disconnect the electrical connector for the rear solenoid, squeeze the tab, and remove. We'll route this wire underneath the canister to the front of the tank when we remove the tank completely. Now we'll remove our electrical connectors. We'll start by removing this small stanchion here. This gives us better access to the two main electrical connectors. 
Now these connectors are slide lock connectors and they have a slide component to them and this will slide from the driver's side to the passenger side and when you slide these you'll also want to pull slightly on the connector so they rise and slide at the same time. And you can see that these have a slight little ramp to them right here. Just repeat the same process for the rear connector. The main fuel line has two retainers that need to be squeezed from opposite directions to release them. These can be a little difficult, but once you squeeze them from both sides, you can remove them. Be prepared because there may be a little residual fuel pressure left in the line. This fuel line has a double lock system to it that needs to be squeezed from both sides in order to release it from the fuel tank. First thing, push down on the line and grab it from both sides and squeeze to release both of these tabs. Remove the fuel vapor line. This has a two tab squeeze connector that you'll grab from either side and squeeze. You may need to push in a little and then pull back to remove. Now that we have our electrical connectors off and our lines, we can lower the tank. Next, we'll remove the canister from the fuel tank. There are three fasteners, one E8, two 10 millimeter. Remove those. We'll take the vapor line off of the end here by pushing in on the clip and pulling out on the hose and slowly sliding this off of two pins and rubber grommets until it disengages from the tank. And now you have access to the cap and internals. You're going to want to clean this area thoroughly before you take the ring off so that no dirt gets inside the fuel tank. Once it's clean, get the special BMW tool, engage it to the ring, and remove it to get access inside the tank. Now we're going to remove this access cover. It is tight on the ring inside, so you need to pry it out very carefully and very slowly around the edge so as not to break it. And it is a little bit on the tight side. <clears throat> now that we have the access, we're going to remove the fuel line and the electrical connectors. On the fuel line, we're going to push in, squeeze the two orange tabs and hold, and then remove gently. For the electrical connectors, we're going to squeeze the two tabs. Here's the sensor, yellow and blue. We're going to squeeze and hold these two tabs and remove the electrical connector. Same thing for the pump connector. Squeeze the two white tabs and wiggle and remove. Now that we have access to the inside of the tank, you're going to find the sensor mounted to the top of the tank on a plastic bracket right here held in with two small plastic tabs which you will squeeze together to remove from the bracket we'll squeeze these two small tabs together and here are the two tabs that you'll squeeze to release it from the bracket that will release the sensor from the bracket and we're going to fish the sensor out around the hose And we'll get that out from around the hose in the fuel pump. Okay, let's get the new one installed. So the new sensor comes with in a static shielding bag, and you're going to want to leave that in the bag until you're ready to install.
And we're going to take the sensor and snake it back in around the pump and onto the bracket just like we took it out. Right. Now that we've routed the wire around the hose, just snap it into the bracket and now it's sitting where it needs to belong. The sensor comes as a kit that includes a sealing o-ring and a new plastic bushing that fits around the opening in the fuel tank. We're going to remove and discard the old o-ring and remove and discard the old plastic ring which just snaps in to the opening. We'll install the new plastic ring by carefully inserting it into the opening and engaging the plastic clips. Make sure it's fully seated. And install the new supplied O-ring into the groove. Now we'll install the cap. Electrical connectors, make sure that they're fully seated and the tabs are engaged. Make sure that they're engaged and they're solid. Last fuel line pushes right on. Give it a tug to make sure that it is fully seated. Don't want to have to come back here. Okay, now we'll install the cap again. Uh, pay attention to the orientation. Uh, there's a uh, guide right here, and we're going to slide it into that new plastic ring that we installed earlier, and it's a tight fit. Yeah, you're going to have to get this on straight and give it a little push to get it all the way home. If you try going in at an angle, it's not going to go. and make sure that this is flush all the way around when it goes in. It's a tight fit. Once the cap is on, we're going to put on the lock ring and engage it into these tabs and tighten using the special BMW tool. Once the ring is installed, make sure that it's fully installed. You can tell by these notches here are lined up with the ring bump. Now that we have our tank assembled, we're going to put it back into the vehicle. It's a reverse procedure of, of what we did to take it out. Uh, important to note though that we make sure that all our connectors are fully seated Every line is seated and locked in so that we don't have any problems after we get it installed. Once the new sensor is installed, you'll need to perform a sensor calibration using your iScan device pass-through feature and factory software. Remember, anytime you work on a fuel system, be sure to check for leaks after the service. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos for more technical procedures and tips for BMW vehicles.